Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Ron Potesta in the morning. Wednesday, most economists are expecting the Fed to announce its second three-quarters of a percent increase in its short-term rate, a hefty increase that uh, hasn't otherwise uh, been implemented since 1994. And to talk a little bit about this, we bring in Young Voices commentator Eric Peterson. Eric, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Happy to be on with you. All right, so the U.S. economy is slowing, and the Democrats are trying to redefine what a recession is. Now, for those of you that don't know, a recession is two uh, consecutive quarters of negative growth, and uh, the the, uh, Democrats, uh, specifically Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, trying to uh, tell everyone, well, that's not really the definition. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So the last uh, quarter, we had 1.6% of negative economic growth. Uh, Those numbers for the second quarter aren't out yet, uh, but I think a lot of people and a lot of your listeners uh, can feel that we're in a recession, the way the economy has been slowing. Um, Of course, they've also been fighting record high inflation, not seen since the 1980s. Um, So if you have low economic or negative economic growth and high inflation, that is known as stagflation. Now, of course, that said, uh, we do have a low unemployment rate. So unlike the last time we had stagflation in the late 70s and early 80s, um, our you know, job market remains strong. Eric Peterson joining me on the hotline. And it feels different because the unemployment is so low. And and obviously, this, this is the byproduct of what we went through with COVID. Am I right on that, Eric? Yeah, uh, I mean, absolutely, right? You've seen... Well, I would say it goes back farther than that, right? We've had a monetary policy of cheap money, right, so low interest rates tomorrow um, since the Great Recession. And the last time the Fed tried to increase interest rates to get you know, back to normalcy at all, uh, the market freaked out and the, the central bank wasn't willing to deal with that. And that ended up to, to a lot of the problem that we see today along with uh, the fiscal stimulus, you know, the PPP loans. All of that money is sloshing through the economy. It's part of the reason you saw a run-up in housing prices um, at a time that we had unemployment during uh, COVID. Eric Peterson joining me. He is the Young Voices commentator. Okay, so Eric, uh, tomorrow most economists are expecting the Fed to announce a second increase of three-quarters of 1%. Now, that would put the Fed's benchmark rate somewhere in the range of 2.25% to 2.5%. It would be the highest level since 2018. What would that mean for the consumer? Yeah, well, hopefully at the end of the day, what it means for consumer is lower prices. Um, I mean, this is what you're hoping to see, right? Less money moving around in that economy, chasing um, so few of the goods that we have due to supply chain issues. But the other thing it might mean is it's higher unemployment because, It'll be more expensive for businesses to start, more expensive for entrepreneurs to borrow money to increase their business. Um, again, we'll see how much that matters to the fact that we have low unemployment and twice as many job openings um, as there are workers right now. But uh, we are in really uncharted territory given our uh, unemployment rate and the fact that we have high inflation. And because we're in an uncharted territory, as you pointed out, Eric, a uh, very low uh, unemployment rates, uh, lots of jobs available, uh, and and that's a first because, as you pointed out earlier in this interview, uh, when you have a high inflation rate, it normally goes along with a high unemployment rate. We're in uncharted territory, so you kind of feel for this administration somewhat because they don't have a map to go to. No, absolutely. But, you know, what they can do, right, um, and again, I think the Fed is trying to take care of this on the, the demand side of, for supply of money, right? Um, but there's a lot the administration could do on the supply side, right? A lot of what we're paying uh, for inflation, the, the parts of it that are transitory, has to do with energy and food prices. And there's a lot the administration can do. There's you know, tariffs to increase trade and get things moving, um, or, of course, you know, look to provide more energy and make the energy industry feel like they can invest long term in increasing production. The supply chain, a, a big issue, and it's been a big issue, even though it was put on the back burner 
uh, when the inflation rate came up. But uh, how big is that supply chain going to be if if you unclog that? Uh, how big of a uh, of a solution could that be with an unclogged uh, supply chain? Yeah, a lot of estimates I've seen have put the supply chain disruptions about two point two to three percent of the inflation that we're dealing with right now. And again, part of that is the energy, right? We're not producing enough domestic energy and um, other countries like Saudi Arabia are in no mood to produce more energy. Uh, and some of it is just we're still very dependent on China for trade. And China continues to have a zero COVID policy where, you know, they see these infection rates going up uh, like they are in the U.S., but rather than deal with it through vaccines and other mitigation, they're still going into lockdown. And you have a lot of good sitting on ports in China. Um, and that is causing gigantic supply chain disruptions as companies seek to adjust. Eric Peterson joining me on the hotline. He is a Young Voices commentator. I, I guess the million-dollar question Eric, is this a long-term problem? And if it is, how much of a potential nightmare is it for this administration come November? Yeah, I think it is a long-term problem. And I think uh, the Fed getting serious about this by hiking it by 70 or 0.75 basis points um, is a first step to dealing with it. What we need to see, though, is that if the economy does continue to slow down with inflation, uh, is that the Fed doesn't freak out and continues to fight to get inflation under control using the tools that they have at their disposal. Eric Peterson joining me. He is the Young Voices commentator. Uh, Eric, you you made mention the inflation rate, which is currently at 9.1%. Next month, when the inflation rate comes up, uh, are you thinking that it's going to be closer to 10% or or do you think the inflation rate goes down, especially with – uh, the, the Fed, most economists, again, expecting the Fed to lower the uh, interest rate, or I should say raise the interest rate again by three-quarters of a percent. Uh, do you anticipate a higher inflation rate come uh, uh, July? I think it'll be lower than we just saw. And the reason uh, that is because so much of inflation has been recently moved by um, energy prices. That Energy prices are still at high levels and there are levels that are too high. Uh, But we have seen a little bit of that pressure come off recently um, as folks have been uh, sort of using a different energy mix and sort of cutting down on their demand uh, on that. So I would think it will be lower. I don't think it'll be substantially lower. My guess is if we look at our year over year rate, we'll still be uh, north of 8%, which is still a a big uh, hurt for the American consumer. The Biden administration not getting a lot of uh, assurances from the American public. His uh, approval ratings are uh, drastically low. Uh, if you had the ear of President Biden, what is the one thing that you would want him to do more than anything else? Uh, I would say, you know, work on the supply side. So that means getting people back to work. That means working on supply chains. And that means making the energy industry feel like they can invest long-term in producing more energy for the American public. Um, and that, you know, could take inflation down by 3% if he gets those policies right. And that's a big deal. Eric Peterson, thank you so very much for the update, and we'll speak soon. Looking forward to it. Thanks so much for having me.